Hello, and I am reading another book to you today. It's called Miss Spider's Tea Party by David Kirk of Scholastic. It's a picture of a spider. One lonely spider sipped her tea while gazing at the sky. She watched the insects on the leaves and many flying by. If I had friends like these, she sighed, you'd stay a while with me. I'd sit them down on silken chairs and serve them cakes and teas. As you can see, there's Miss Spider. Butterflies, bees, butterfly. Other insects. Two timid beetles, Ike and May, crept from the woodwork that same day. When Miss Spider begged, please stay, they shrieked, oh no, and dashed away. Three fireflies flew inside that night. Their spirits hide their tails alight. They spied the web and squeaked in fright. Hey, we better get away from here. The little trio did not feel they cared to be a spider's meal. Four bumblebees buzzed by outside. Please come to tea, Miss Spider cried. The four, ignore, the four ignored her swaying there. She waved a tea towel in the air. She took a cup and tapped a glass. Then one bee spoke to her at last. We will be fools to take our tea with anyone so spidery. Within the shadows of the room... Just peeking from behind a broom. Five grinning faces bobbed and peered. Miss Spider smiled. Her heart was cheered. Descending for a closer look, she danced into the gloomy nook. But at last found these jolly mugs. Belong the last rubber bugs. Some ants strode in. They numbered six. But ants of spiders will not mix. She brewed them tea from hips of roses. The proud platoon turned up their noses. There's a picture on the side. A fine maker concealed its prize of seven dainty butterflies. The spider watching from the wall was not aware of them at all. There's Miss Spider right there. Butterflies all around. The, the tea table was set for eight with saucers, cups, and silver plate. Cakes were fresh. The silver, the service gleamed. Yet no one would arrive. It was seemed her company in no demand left her a cup for every hand. As you can see. Nine spotted moths kept safe and warm and shelter from a thunderstorm. They stood beneath an open sash and watched a jagged lightning flash. The spider dropped down on a thread, a silver tray above her head. She hoped to please them, but instead, they flew away in mortal dread. They've left me all alone, she cried. She dabbed her eyes and sadly sighed. It's plain no bug will ever stay. Her tears splashed down upon the tray. Ten tiny steaming cups of tea were perched atop her trembling knee. She sipped and sobbed, then her cough, and turned to see a small wet mo moth. A fragile thing, so soaked by rain, his wings showed his wings too damp to fly again. She smiled and took a checkered cloth to cloak the frail and thankful moth. They talked and snacked on tea and pie until his tiny wings were dry. Then lifting him with tender care, she tossed him gently into the, in the air.
The moth told Ike, then Ike told me. He went from bug to bug to say, There is no reason for alarm. She's never meant us any harm. So later on the afternoon, assembled in the dining room, eleven insects came to tea to share Miss Spider's courtesy. As you can see. Twelve tender violets in a vase presented at Miss Spider's place. Set by her chair, so neatly spun, she munched the blossoms one by one. Her friends were glad to watch her feast upon the floral centerpiece. It was a great relief to see she just ate flowers and drank just tea. The spider's reputation grew before too long our hostess knew. Every bug who crawled or hopped or flew, and all their wonderful children too. See, that's all the bugs' children. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that story. I certainly did. And I'll see you for our next story. Bye.